the sun in particular, relatively close to the earth, and that sun, just 92 million miles away, it only takes eight minutes for its radiation to strike the earth, but some of that radiation can be lethal unless there's a protective shield. But we still need that strong radiation. I want you to get this in mind. The more we research this, the more beautific the design is. If the rays are unabated and unshielded, they're lethal, particularly the intense ultraviolet, lethal to many living organisms. But we need that ultraviolet radiation to recharge Earth's magnetic field because we living systems are going to be using that field up. And unless it's recharged, and there are no free lunches, unless it's recharged, it's all going to run down very rapidly. So what a beautiful design. The sun's energy and the energy of other stellar bodies, shortwave radiation is picked up in that firmament, in that thin canopy, through the fabric of space, which is also a part of the firmament because it involves a spatial dimension. But on Earth, it's concentrated here in this form. It recharges the magnetic field, yet it shields out <coughs> the shortwave radiation for living systems. Beautiful. Now, quickly, because I want to give you a panorama. Then on day number three, God created the dry land. The canopy was already in place. The full spatial dimension was in the background. So God created the dry land and the first living systems outside itself. Remember, the first law of biogenesis is only life produces life. Life cannot come from inorganic compounds. Only life produces life. Now, watch closely. So we have the living systems of plants. And the statement is from the scripture that the fruit was on the vine and the seeds were in the fruit. That is immediate maturity uh, instantly, functional maturity and immediate youth. Wow, what a beautiful way to go. Then we have the internal structure of the earth as a nuclear reactor actually giving gentle radiation to warm the waters under the surface of the earth, they would spring forth, and it's been found that if you heat the roots of plants three degrees above average ambient temperature, the plants grow so much better. Watch this. It's also been found that if you run the radiation through magenta, pink, 63, 65 angstrom magenta, if you run the radiation through that, the plants grow so much better. So here we have the system to encourage growth through the roots. We have the system to encourage growth through the firmament. What a wonderful context. In fact, how big were those plants? In the pre-flood world, everything was larger. We have plants today called lycopsid club mosses, 16 to 8 inches in height is the best we can produce them. But in the fossil record, they got up to 120 feet in stature. So in that originally created world, everything was absolutely perfect in its balance and design. But quickly, let's get a little more of the panorama. That was day three. Day four, we have the stellar bodies created. On day five, we have the fish and the fowl in a beautiful relationship, symbiotic relationship. On day number six, we have the mammals, the insects, and of course, ultimately Adam and Eve, reflecting the glory and the character of God, the image of God himself. But in this panorama, in the un unfolding of universal history, there's been disruption. The entrance of sin, 1,700 years later, the disruption of the flood itself. After that, three to five hundred years, we have the expansion of the globe in Peleg's day from a thermonuclear expansion inside. That brings us to our current decay. And then we're approaching a time of tribulation. And there will be an earthquake such as the world has never seen. After that, the millennial reign when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will rule and reign for a thousand years. But after that, God will make all things new and will have the eternal 
ages to enjoy. I've tried to give you just an encapsulation, a panoramic view of history. The Bible says in the future that the heavens will roll together as a scroll. God will make all things new and then we will be in an eternal state to enjoy him forever. This grand panorama has scientific basis, but it also has a compassionate moral basis to its design. God did not make robots. God made us in his image and as he is reflective and makes choices, man was reflective and made choices and Adam and Eve ultimately made an evil choice. We say we can't blame them for our condition. No, because we sin sooner than they. The moment we reach a state of accountability, we sin. But God made a way of escape. He sent his son, himself in the flesh, who lived his life, died for our sins, was buried, rose from the dead, and at this moment is knocking at your heart's door. Would you right now just pray this simple prayer? Just pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know you sent Jesus to die for me. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you. Come into my heart right now. Cover my sins with your blood. And I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, in the panorama of time, the God of the universe stepped into your heart to live, and he will be there for all eternity. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.